what's going on guys it's Rayek here and uh, welcome to a new series I'm trying out it's uh, just, right now I'm just gonna title it uh, what to play um, you know, we'll see how much we can get in here and uh, basically it's just a series where I want to take two similar games uh, kind of compare them give the pros and cons of each but it, you know it's not really like uh, you should buy this game it's more of just a comparison I'm not gonna be really doing any like reviews saying this game is bad or the other one's good. Just kinda wanna go through the games that are out there right now that are similar that you might be interested in buying, but you know, maybe you can't make a choice because both look cool, so maybe this will give you a little more insight onto uh, which game to buy, which is, you know, <laughs> title of the series, what to play. Maybe I can uh, help you pick what you want to play next. So, uh, anyway, let's uh, just get right to the point. Today I'm going over uh, Chivalry, Medieval Warfare, and uh, War of the Roses. Now, uh, Chivalry um, was uh, uh, developed by uh, Torn Banner Studios, and uh, it was released uh, pretty recently. I think it was in beta for a while. Um, I think they're, they're definitely still adding uh, to it. I'm pretty sure it's out of beta, but... Um, uh, yeah, it's pretty much been released in the past couple months, and uh, War of the Roses is the same. They're uh, published by Paradox Interactive and developed by uh, Fat Shark Studios. They came out in October, um, and so they, yeah, they both came out around the same time, um, and they're both uh, medieval settings, first person, third person games. You control a single character, uh, typically like a knight or an archer, and you fight in different style matches. Um, and you know, each uh, game has a couple of different uh, unique uh, uh, matches, but for the most part, they both have the team death match uh, and like a conquest or team objective uh, style of play. And that's mostly what you're going to be seeing in these games. Uh, so, you know, let's just take a look. Right now I've been showing you Chivalry for the uh, past uh, minute or two here. And uh, let's talk about that for right now. Um, basically, each match starts and uh, you choose your class and the kind of gear you want to equip, as you can see here. Um, the choices you have are Archer, Man-at-Arms, Vanguard, and Knight. And those are the four classes. And uh, kind of in progressing order of heaviness, if you will. Uh, and each has their own unique skill, kind of like the, well, uh, or weapons that they can equip. The archer's got the bow, uh, man at arms has this uh, dodge ability or a little lunge they can do. Vanguard can do a sweet charge and really chop some heads with that thing. And the knight is just a heavier class, it withstands a lot of damage. Um, each class, when you first start, is going to have the lowest level weapon. So, what you saw when I was picking up my, uh, the gear that I wanted to use, uh, you see all different tiers, and some of the weapons were locked, and that's because as you get more kills with certain weapons, you unlock further weapons down the tree. Um, so each weapon essentially has three different upgrades, if you will. They're more side grades, I would say. Um, but there are a couple uh, scenarios where, where you'll see a significantly better weapon by uh, getting more kills with a lower level weapon. Uh, so basically the main game modes that you're going to play in Chivalry are Free For All, uh, Team Deathmatch, Last Team Standing, and uh, Team Objective. There's also King of the Hill, but that seems to be a pretty rare choice. I've probably only played it once, and it was it was crazy, actually. There was... Uh, that was one of the craziest matches. I would like to see more of it. Um, uh, the way you join the games in Chivalry is through servers. Uh, it's the same with War of the Roses um, and a lot of other, you know, uh, fighting, shooting games, whatever. And, uh, yeah, I would like to see more King of the Hill. I've actually had a really good time with that. So, yeah. Um, basically... My opinion on Chivalry is that it's a really fast-paced, action-oriented game, and you can really just get into it really quickly. Um, and also, it helps that sometimes it's just downright hilarious. Some of the animations and sounds in the game, I, like you just you can't help but smile, and <laughs> it's you know sometimes it's just an absolute blast. 
Um, and, you know, I think it's really easy to get into. I think you can have someone that, you know, might not know as much what they're doing, or it's more of a casual game. I would, I would definitely give it that, uh, label. Um, that's not to say there's no skill involved. I think, um, that you can definitely tell who a good player is and a bad player is, and, um... There's uh, definitely a certain level of skill gap um, to the point where um, I've seen you know one player get killed every time and another player that seems like he's cheating because you just can't kill him. He blocks all your attacks and he always hits you when you think you're blocking and things like that. Um, and I think that you know it's really nice that you can kind of just get in the game. You don't really need to think too much about what you're doing. Um, you can really really just hop right in a server and start knocking off heads and that's one of the things I really personally love about the game. Um, I would say as far as balance goes, the classes are all pretty balanced. Um, I'd say there's some issues with free-for-all if you're uh, like one of the classes that has a big uh, weapon with a lot of range, a lot of uh, uh, reach on it, then you can really kind of just get in the middle of people and swing that thing and take out like five people at once, which is awesome. It's hilarious, but you know it's a little unfair if you're an archer. I would say if you're an archer in a free for all, you're probably not going to win. You can, you know, uh, they don't take many hits. A lot of weapons can like kill them in like one shot if you got a heavier weapon, and uh, obviously you can't hit more than one person with an arrow. Um, so. I think uh, for free-for-all, you have a little bit of balance issues, but that's just the nature of the way things are. I mean, if I was in a big battle royale, I wouldn't want to be a little tiny archer either. But in a team, that's where the archer really becomes useful. You know, he sits in the back, he hits people, they get knocked off balance, he snipes people and they're trying to run away, things like that. Um, and I think the, really the team play of chivalry is where um, you're going to have the most fun. Um, team killing is actually not that frustrating. I mean, you get mad and you're like, oh my god, team kill me, but it's actually hilarious sometimes when your team just comes up. I don't you see the screen right now, there's some, about <laughs> four different people who are getting team killed. Uh, it's just hilarious. Um, of course, that was partially because the game, uh, the round was ending, but that's okay. Um, I think it's really cool that in Chivalry, um, actually, here's a King of the Hill match, even though I said they're very rare. Um, but this was the one of the few times I got to play it, and it is just an absolute blast. It's completely crazy. Just people go into the center here and just start swinging wild. I'm, like, scared. I don't even know what to do. Anyway, um, I think one of the awesome things with chivalry is the ability that everyone can kind of find their own uh, niche and style of play. Um, you know, if you like being a light, quick swordsman, you can pick the man-at-arms. It's one of the things I enjoy. And if you uh, enjoy getting in the mix and really just swinging your axe around, you can be a knight and basically take a million hits and not, you know, take down the little guys. Um, and, you know, it, it's, it does that really well. You really feel, especially with the... Uh, Man at arms really feel like you're hopping around, and the heavier classes have trouble hitting you and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, I think that that aspect alone is something that's really awesome. Um, also, the fact that you might have just noticed I got beheaded—that's uh, hilarious. Anyway, um, it's just you know this is another game mode here uh, that I wanted to show you guys, and it's. You can see these peasants, <laughs> kind of funny looking, um, basically it's just another team objective, and in this one, um, I'm the knights trying to defend the village, and uh, the other knights, the ones trying to come in, kill the peasants, burn the town down, that kind of thing. So just another cool objective uh, uh, game type that, war that uh, chivalry uh, has that's really a lot of fun. I mean, and I've played as the other team, and when you get to kill those peasants, it's freaking hilarious. They, like, they're screaming and trying to run away, and it's just, the game has a, a great sense of humor, and, uh, you really enjoy, like, you really feel like, uh, you're just having a blast when you play it. 
Um, it's fast paced. You get into it really easy. Um, you can pick it up, play it for 30 minutes, put it down. You don't feel like you're really missing anything. Um, you know, some people have kind of called it just like Counter Strike in medieval times, and in some ways, like that. Um, I mean, you do have the last team standing where when you die, you have to wait to the end of the round to respawn. But, um, you know, I think it's just a really fun game. Um, and if you're looking for some. I almost want to call it arcade style with a little bit of persistence. Um, you should definitely think about uh, picking up chivalry. Alright, so. Probably just let this run for about another 10 seconds or so and uh, move on. Let's move on to War of the Roses. Um, one of my favorite things about War of the Roses is just the amount of customization. I'm always really into making a game my own and creating my character, whatever, whatever I can do. Um, and you can really do that in War of the Roses. You can change your coat of arms, your seal, your colors, all that. And um, you'll see coat of arms there on the left uh, as a... Uh, uh, particular selection you can make. Um, but probably the most awesome thing about um, War of the Roses is the way you can create your own custom class. Now basically when you first start playing the game you and you join a server or whatever you have some preset classes. Uh, like an archer, a footman, a knight, uh, a couple, just, you know, preset classes that have all the things already said, you don't have to worry about it, you can just kind of learn the game. Um, but as you gain some levels, or ranks, or whatever they're called, by winning matches, killing people, um, doing all that sorts of things, you unlock these points, and these points allow you to go into the profile editor and create a class, just like I'm doing right here. Um, you could already see me going through uh, a couple different weapons. You have like your main weapon, a sidearm, a shield. You have to like unlock perks to use different uh, uh, things like the shield or horse or um, the archery. And I think that's pretty awesome. And the nice thing about the perk system is, while you know, you know, you might say, "Oh, it's kind of ripping off Call of Duty." Well. You know, when you have custom classes like that, it's not... Call of Duty didn't invent that. They just... They kind of mainstreamed it in a way. Um, having a certain amount of points you can use to unlock different things to make your class do different things. Um, you know, and... Like, look at this. You can customize all the way down to the pummel of your... Uh, the hilt of your sword. Um, and that, that, to me, is crazy. I mean, obviously, there's only two options, but... Still, that's ridiculous. Anyway, so everything you do, the, excuse me, everything you do changes your stats in you know a little bit of ways this way, a little bit of way, a little bit of that way, and um, eventually you could pretty much get the exact stats you want. If you want to be a heavy hitting knight with a two ended sword, which I was kind of trying to make in uh, this video right here, you can certainly go for that. And um, if you want to be a light uh, footman who jumps around the place, is really quick on his feet, you can do that too. You get like a smaller sword, maybe uh, get the nice get a shield in there, and um, you can do that. Now another thing uh, which you can see right here, I'm looking at the mounts, um, and that's one thing that's really awesome about War of the Roses that actually Chivalry doesn't have. Um, you can see a guy riding a horse right there. Um, is you can get you can get horses and you can uh, you get a lance and you can eventually just ram into people and I think this guy eventually takes me out as I'm trying to spar with this uh, other guy and um, they can do massive damage and as you saw right there he actually knocked his buddy down. Um, so let's talk about the attacking system. In uh, Chivalry, I didn't mention it, but you do have a couple different attacks. You have Swing, you can Stab, you can 
uh, attack from overhead, and when you block, you kind of want to block, uh, you want to be looking at where the person attacking you from to successfully block. In War of the Roses, it's a little different. Uh, the best way to compare it is to compare it to a game called Mountain Blade. Um, this is a game I had a blast with. It's a really fun game. It's a single player game. Um, you, there is some multiplayer aspects to it, but um, essentially, the fighting in it is just like in War, uh, is the way it is in War of the Roses. Um, essentially, you choose which direction you want to swing your sword. And actually, you can see right here, I'm executing a guy. Uh, another cool thing I'll talk about in a second. But um, the way you swing your sword is the way you move your mouse. So when I'm swinging from the left side there, it's because I'm holding down the mouse button and um, moving my mouse to the left. And you can also choose the strength of your attack. So you'll see the, uh, the cone kind of get smaller, and that means my attack is uh, completely uh, uh, charged up. And when I release, it'll have the most effect if I get a nice hit in there. Um, and so, uh, the, the one thing I don't like about the game is the uh, feedback on whether or not you're doing damage to a guy is, can sometimes be really poor. Um, you'll see this guy, he has a shield, and you can see, oh, a shield come up and I block it, that's great. But see right there, he didn't block it, um, it still had a shield, so I assume it's from his armor. But... I would think that my uh, weapon would still do some damage through his armor, but it doesn't really address that. Um, I think now I switched to a different sword to see if I could go faster, but this guy just came in, he just has this sword and it's just wailing, it's like it's tagging me faster than I can even do anything. Um, and you know, that's what I'm kind of wondering, it's like I had some pretty heavy armor, I wonder how much damage he was doing. Um, it just that kind of feedback is kind of hard to uh, uh, figure out. Anyway, here's the server list real quick. Um, I'd need to pick a different server because that one was hard to see with all the snow and everything. So anyway, the, what you just saw, execution. So when you knock down a guy, um, when you mortally wound them, there's actually two kinds of wounds. The wound you're seeing right now um, is uh, when you you're bleeding out essentially and you can bandage yourself by holding B to stand still for about six seconds or something and you'll come back and you'll be okay um, but there's also you can get knocked out essentially and you'll be down on the ground like I was right there and a teammate can come up and they can actually revive you um, and then you're back in the back in the fray uh, back in the mix and uh, if they don't revive you, that's okay, but then um, either you have to yield, which allows you to respawn, or an enemy player can come up and execute you. And essentially what that does is it forces you to respawn, you can't be revived. Um, so right here, um, I was waiting to spawn. Um, so you actually select spawn points. You, you can um, uh, cho join a squad, and you can join on a squad leader, and um, it's just a little more in depth than sh uh, chivalry. You can actually choose uh, like places you want to spawn. Uh, so this I was trying out a different class because I didn't really like the fact that um, the class that I made, the helmet, was uh, really obstructing my vision. Um, probably would not choose that helmet again. Um, so as you can see there, <laughs> probably because I was using one of the cookie cutter classes, it kind of got destroyed. Anyway. One thing you probably noticed right away with War of the Roses is the fact that you're playing in third person. Um, compared to Chivalry, yeah, that's different. I don't know if it's worse or better. Um, you got a little more field of view. Um, your attacks are slightly different than Chivalry, so you don't necessarily have to aim right at a crosshair quite like you do in Chivalry. Um, you kind of block, rather than blocking in the direction of the actual weapon, like in Chivalry uh, in War of the Roses, you kind of block in the direction of where the weapon's coming from. Um, so that makes playing in third person much easier. Um, you can kind of see me right now, I'm trying not to attack my teammates too much. Um, I got this big ass sword, 
just trying to take out some people, and it's pretty hard to hit people, and I can't help but wonder if first person might help that a little bit. Um, I will say that with the Roses is much more tactical, and it takes a little more patience to uh, really get the hang of and get used to. Um, I would say I'm definitely not that good at it, um, but, you know, maybe one day. Um, it definitely helps that I played a lot of Mountain Blade that got me used to the attack system. The main thing I have to learn to, uh, now is just, you know, what kind of knights can I take out? I mean, look at all, all of us are trying to take this guy on the horse, and the horse is just like, he's running right by, he's like, oh, yeah, get out of there, blah, blah, blah. Um, pretty cool, though, that you can do that, you know, ride on a horse, try to joust people. Looks like he got trapped, and then we took him out. So, I kill his horse, they execute him. <laughs> Pretty funny. Um, so, the War of the Roses is definitely a much more serious game. Uh, definitely goes for the realism aspect. Um, so, as you can see right there, I'm hitting this guy. Uh, he doesn't really seem to know what's happening. Um, and I do some good damage. Um, I just can't seem to get him. Um, I think eventually he runs away, um, and his friend ends up taking me out, um, which is a shame, because I think I actually would have been able to kill that guy. Um, and there you go, getting executed, pretty funny. Um, and like, things like that make the game really cool and aesthetically pleasing, for sure. Um, yeah. So, executing I decided to try out the and, Archer class, you know, so I'm like getting you guys what it looks, looks cool. what it's like to be an Archer. Um, um and of course I got killed insta-killed by a guy on a horse. Um, that's one of the things you can do if you lance someone right in the face and they're uh, light-armored like an archer or something. Um, so, I do kind of like the ranged... Uh, look at this guy, he's coming back for me. I hit him once, but uh, couldn't quite kill him, I guess. Anyway, I do kind of like the uh, ranged classes in the way they did archery in War of the Roses a little better. Um, you definitely get absolutely you definitely don't even have a chance like you kind of do in chivalry if you start if you get hunted down like this um and but i like the way that you shoot more uh if you're a crossbowman uh just real quick this is what the end battle report screen looks like um you actually have to it's kind of annoying when the game ends you have to wait about 45 seconds for the next game i don't know why on earth they would make you wait that long guess if you really want to look at stats for that long, you can. But, uh, anyway. So, the archery, like I was saying, um, I like it more in War of the Roses because I feel, it feels smoother. Um, I feel like in Chivalry, you're, like, putting your arrow in the bow for, like, three hours. And, you know, real, it doesn't take that long to put an arrow in a bow. Uh, what takes a long time is aiming up the shot. Um... But, it's okay. It's fun in both, for sure. Um, now, let's talk about the main game modes uh, that you have in War of the Roses, because it's pretty much just Team Deathmatch and Team Conquest. And with Team Deathmatch, it's pretty self-explanatory, but with Team Conquest, uh, it's kind of like... Uh, uh, domination in Call of Duty, I think that's what it's called. We gotta find the different points, control them and stuff. Um, and uh, I actually like that mode a lot. You can get some really cool maps. Uh, some of the uh, castle maps are really awesome looking in this game. And uh, really aesthetically pleasing, enjoyable to play in and look at. And, uh, actually get away here, because, uh, my friend comes and helps me out. That guy was kind of destroying me. Um, I got a few good hits in, but then this guy came in and finished him off. See, now, he is a light armor. Um, as you can see, he's got a little tiny dagger, and he still took out that heavy guy. So it's not impossible. Um, I just don't think I'm very good at the game. I had a lot of fun with both these games, and I think they're both great. Um, I think for a final, uh, you know, statement on both of them, if you're looking for, if you only can buy one, um, 
If you can only buy one, I think you gotta determine what you want. Uh, War of the Roses is a very serious game, uh, much more customizable, and uh, very tactical. Um, while Chivalry, uh, you're gonna have a blast playing it, really fast-paced, action-oriented, and uh, honestly, I, I wouldn't tell you to buy one over the other. I think they're both great games and both very enjoyable. So, uh, if nothing else, I hope this guy helped you guys out a little bit to figure out uh, what kind of medieval warfare game you want to play. Until next time, guys. Thanks for watching.